Good morning. Well, I'm going to change the pace a bit. I know you've had some very interesting lectures this morning. Um, and uh, we're going to go more into some uh, more basic hardcore things, which is really the birth of, of A4M, which is really sports medicine, which is where we try to take the best from every specialty to create peak performance. I had the pleasure of going to the Olympic Games for the last 20 years, and I was in China and Beijing for the Games. I'm in China every uh, month or two. And uh, spending $45 billion on an Olympic game was really quite a remarkable experience. I've never seen an opening and closing ceremony like they were able to pull off. And we've seen performances now that really go above and beyond what we thought were possible. Now, this integrates into anti-aging medicine because with anti-aging medicine, we too are looking at peak performance, maximum performance for our patients at all ages. Now, in the old days, like old days like 10 years ago, when we used to say, who wants to live to be 100? Everybody would be like, you know, I don't want to live to be 100. That's, you know, that's old. We're decrepit. Now you have to say 120, 130 or more in order to catch people's attention because our mindset has changed. Don't you wish you can still do this? I wish I could. Well, anti-aging medicine is now the fastest growing medical specialty in the world today, and we're really just looking at the tip of the iceberg. This is really just the beginning of what you're going to see in advanced preventative medicine. It's going to continue to grow as new aspects and new theories and new concepts become a reality. Now, this was the reason why people did not want to live to be 80 or 90 years old because this was their view of aging. Alzheimer's, loss of bone mass, loss of muscle mass, loss of cognition, loss of general capacity. And this was the mindset of people of meaning what it meant to live to be 80 or 90 or older. And today we have a much different view. This Diana Dennis's photograph was taken of her at the age of 58. She's 62 today, looks better at 62 then she did at 58. So we have a really different mindset. Sophia Loren turned 72 years ago, and for her 70th birthday, she decided to pose for a calendar wearing only a pair of earrings. Now, it's not often you think of a sex symbol at the age of 70, and 70 and beyond. So we're really getting a paradigm shift. This is a picture of my old girlfriend. She dumped me for a younger guy. I'm still trying to recover. But, you know, we have a different view now of what the people can do and what their capacity is when they get older. Diane von Furstenberg, these photos were taken uh, many years apart. You can see she's still having trouble picking the right dress. Dick Clark, he's a cyborg. He's not human. It's all computer chips. That's why he doesn't change. But really, with exercise training, it's really intensity, frequency, and duration of exercise. These guys used to surf together 30 years earlier, and they're still doing it. They just change the intensity and frequency and duration. Now, back in the old days, in the 30s and 40s and so on, to be a great athlete, all you had to do was have some natural pa talent like a Babe Ruth. You didn't really train. Guys didn't weight train. They didn't watch their diets. You used to drink beer, eat frankfurters, stay out late, carouse. He didn't train. He went just on natural talent, where today athletes can't get by on that. Today, we really need to look at things to, be, to develop our peak performance and capacity, whether it be for whatever part of the physiology or whatever sport competition we wish to go into. Someone like Lance Armstrong is somebody who's always pushed this envelope, recovering from cancer, going on to win multiple Tour de France is a great example of this. Now in anti-aging medicine we're fighting this clock. We can't change time, we can't regain time, but what we can do is change the effect that time is having on the patients. So as anti-aging physicians we see the cup as half full, not half empty. We say what can we do to address this massive baby boomer population and adjust this generation gap which is growing so now we have multiple generations in a room, not one or two. So we want to try and get away from going from the baby bottle to the Coke bottle to the beer bottle and then ending up in the IV bottle. I guess we'd like to stay by the beer bottle, which would be a little better. This is an ad from Time magazine saying life begins in 100. You know, this is a very conservative magazine and now it's kind of reaching a bit. And this was another ad from Time magazine putting a 1 in front of the 74 for 174. Again, we're starting to think out of the box. If I told you 15 years ago that you could take your little cell phone and you could send messages to 100,000 people in a matter of 30 seconds or so, files, everything. You'd think I was crazy. You'd have a supercomputer in your hands. It's impossible. A supercomputer would take up half this room. 
But yet today, this is sure, we can do this. So we need to start thinking as physicians, not with the year 2008 brain, but with the year 2020 brain. Because as you look through the covers of magazines in terms of the topics that are now of interest in terms of DNA, double helix, gene therapy, genetic engineering, wanting to improve the things that patients just accepted before that they couldn't sleep, how biotechnology is changing our lives just like the Internet and telecommunications is so dramatically changing as well. We want to know that seniors, their greatest valued item is their memory, their cognition, their memories of family and their life experiences are critically important. How gene doping and genetic manipulation is coming into play more and more. How do we improve the strength of our brains? And there's been a series of lectures over the course of the weekend on different cognitive uh, enhancers. Nanotechnology, another very exciting field. How do we get in there and c correct the arthritis? So you should not, not be able to do the activities you like simply because you have some joint pain. We have to work around it. Heart disease, inflammatory disease. How is cloning going to affect us as time goes on? And what can we do to try and stay younger? How do we take the east and west components of medical things. How do we take herbal medicine, acupuncture, massage therapy, sports training, sports rehabilitation, as well as hardcore pharmaceutical intervention, and how do we merge this with our general practice and hormone replacement for our patient's best care? So now we're looking at things with a more open, cohesive mind on how can we use the best of the best? How do we adjust our diets? Now, with a changing in society, we also have other challenges. Children now, like we, not like us, when we were younger, we were out playing in, outside all day, getting physical activity. The soil was more enriched. We were eating better foods. We wouldn't have all these fast foods all over the place. We weren't sitting in front of a computer playing games all day, and the only thing exercising was our thumbs. So now we have a whole generation of children that are not as mentally stable because they're not interacting with other children. They're eating fast foods and high sugar and genetically modified foods. Now they're developing a whole generation of children who have early onset of childhood obesity, diabetes, and a whole array of other disorders.